What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Scrap Mechanic, and today we're looking at some more modded stuff. I've just really been messing around. You guys may have noticed a couple weeks ago, I worked on the Invincible Parts mod. I added a bunch of Invincible Parts into a, a simple mod. I'm actually going to expand that a little bit more and make more parts Invincible, and that was, of course for the bot spawning battle arena, which I am making a second version of that. But like I said, I want to add to the invincible parts mod first so I can have like invincible logic and that sort of thing. So I don't have to worry about building all the logic way away from the arena, but that's project for another day. So in the meantime, I kind of wanted to do a little bit more modding and scrap mechanic. And this is sort of a weird video for me because I figured we could do just some really basic things live just to show you guys what I've been kind of digging into. And really, I've spent a lot of time recently just sort of going through the scrap mechanic files. There are a lot of things you can you can really screw around with in scrap mechanic. And it's really quite fun. Um, for example, this is a spud gun, uh, but it shoots cows because... Uh, why not? They've got like a wicked spin on them too. We can adjust that. I'll show you guys in a sec. We can actually get rid of that spin, but I, you know, I made the spud gun shoot cows. They still do the same damage as a regular spud gun though. I was actually trying to figure out a way to make them break metal, but you can see if we put a cardboard, you know, a cardboard stretch down. Um, oh no, not that one. Th this one. See, it still breaks the cardboard as if it was a normal spud. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it can't break the metal. So I was trying to work on that. However, they are like super powerful if we break this capsule. Uh, it's all one shot now. So I, I jacked the damage up to 99,999 from I think like a value of 10. So here we've got uh, the potato rifle Lua file. So believe it or not, I actually used to do some programming uh, for my career. I used to work as an engineer in the automotive industry. I've done some programming before, mostly robotics, that kind of thing. But I did do some other unrelated programming, not related to robotics and, and stuff like that. Haven't really done Lua in like like forever but it's not too bad it's pretty easy to understand there's lots of you know libraries online that you can look up commands and scripts the hardest part i'm finding with scrap mechanic honestly is finding the stuff that you want to change uh the folder structure is insane there's folders everywhere there's like different instances so for example when you're dealing with uh spawning cows and stuff like that and objects they're actually referencing survival folders and you have to pull files from the survival folders and it's it's just really difficult to find the stuff you're looking for uh but anyway this is the potato rifle lua file you can see i've cranked the damage up to 99,999. it doesn't seem to do anything to metal so i gotta figure out where that is all happening i was trying to look through it and find where the block command to destroy blocks comes from with the durability it doesn't seem to be in this file but anyway with this we, we're basically telling the spud gun uh, to shoot cows. You can see we can adjust all sorts of stuff here, like the fire velocity, the cooldown. We can adjust the spread, the angle of it, all that sort of thing. Um, there's also another file we've got here, projectiles. And this is where we've actually, you can see we've given the cow uh, the the texture of the potato. So it's still shooting a quote-unquote potato, but it's textured the potato to look like a cow. And actually, if we take this, you can see here we've got our spin factor. So we can actually set that to zero. Uh, we'll have to reload the game to get that, but we can save this, and now this is not going to have a spin. Now, of course, I know what you're saying. You're going to be like, well, Khan, what about the other weapons? And I'm so glad you asked. So, of course, the uh, the cow spud gun is great, but, you know, everyone wants to know what would you do with the spudling gun? Well, that's obviously really simple. You make it shoot glow bugs. Um, so it's a glow bug shooting spud gun. Now, you'll notice these aren't actually spawning objects. This is another thing I was trying to work on, which is kind of a weird thing. I got to figure out how to how to do this, but they're not spawning objects. They're spawning just retextured potatoes at a low velocity. So it looks like spinning glow bugs, uh, but in reality, you can see when they hit the ground, they disappear. I'd like to make it so they actually spawn glow bugs on the ground, but long story short, the projectile script and the script for spawning objects, like when we destroy this, um, those are two different scripts. So this, you can see that spawns once anyway, long story short. It's really, really cool stuff. I'm really excited to be diving into this kind of thing and just playing around with it. But uh, definitely a lot of cool things I want to try. But of course, the final thing you're probably wondering is like, well, what does the shotgun do? Uh, that's really simple. It shoots farm bots, you know, because it's because because why not? They're all white, too. I could recolor them as well. It's really it's really cool. So there I, I believe they're just inherently taking white because it's the default color of the mesh. Um, but we could recolor it. As you can see, one thing I didn't notice, the shotgun shoots four shots. We can adjust the spread of them as well if we wanted them all to be in line with each other but look at that it actually shoots four shots every time you know didn't know that cool stuff so anyway we're not gonna play around with that um no spin no spin on the shotgun just realized but let's reload the game and uh because we've taken the spin off the spud gun just to prove that that works so we can take the spin off 
And let's uh, do the same with the glow bug thing too. So here you can see we're back in that projectiles.json file. Uh, it's just, you basically open everything up in text. This is actually Notepad++. So this is a program similar to Notepad, except it kind of formats the stuff for you. You can see it actually indents stuff properly. Uh, and, you know, it gives you different colors and all that and formats it nicely. So it's really easy to sort of read and deal with when you're making changes. Uh, but anyway, you can see here we've got it. We put a spin on, um, well, where is it here? Spin of five. I put a spin of five on the fries. I'm curious what that's going to do. It's going to make the fries spin, presumably. And put a spin of zero on both the regular gun and the Gatling gun. So loading back into the game, you have to reload the game every time. It does have to compile all the stuff. So if you try and make changes in the text file and then, you know, alt tab into your game, none of those changes will apply until you literally quit the whole game and reload it just the way it is. Uh, there you go. So you can see we've got no spin on, a little bit of spin on the cat. Look at that, like, lazy... Oh, no, no spin there. Oh, no, a little bit of spin. Weird. You can see we can shoot the cows straight up. Anyway, so that's cows. Uh, this one, again, no spin. Look at that, perfect. This one's... <laughs> it's really weak. It looks kind of like a fountain. Uh, curiously enough, this does work with the mounted spud gun. I believe the mounted spud gun is going to take the same thing as the regular spud gun in terms of projectiles. So it should shoot cows... Unless I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it shoots cows. All right, you can see it just it just shoots cows. Anyway, and then of course the shotguns. Now these have spin on them. Look at that. Throwing some wicked curveball. But anyway, that's not why we're here today. I'm gonna play around with the spawners. Uh, these are the bot spawner capsules. There's actually a file. We're gonna open that up right now. So there's this file here. This is called package. Package.lua. They're sort of all hidden in the game files. This one is in particular in Scrap Mechanic Data Scripts Game Interactable Package.lua. It's uh, one of the package scripts. And this is the, the function that gets called, or I guess the file that gets called. There's a bunch of functions in it. But it's the file that gets called when you try to destroy one of the bot packages, like the bot capsules, right? Here's our bot capsule. Uh, and we can just shoot this with a cow, of course. And every time we break one of these capsules... You can see it spawns a dude and depending on which capsule we break it determines what dude we spawn now of course all my guns do 99,999 damage so that's why we're one-shotting everything that comes out of the capsule including this guy see i can just hit him once with a cow and he's dead yeah it's just i have a golden gun now it's fine it's actually kind of convenient for this because i can just yeah that's that's amazing but anyway, so this is a really simple file. So what we can do, of course, is change that file. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the file here. And long story short, this function here, this SV unpack, this is the function where we actually determine, you know, how we're going to unpack the object. And so this this one line right here, sm.create.unit.createUnit, uh, this line actually unpacks the object. And what it's basically doing is it takes the ID of the object from the package itself. Each package, you know, long story short, you go into the objects file and you can assign which package spawns which object. So we could if we wanted to, we're not going to do that today, but we could take like the tote bot package and make it spawn farm bots and take the cow package and make it start spawn glow bugs and switch up all the IDs and all the packages so they look like one thing, but they spawn something completely different. And that could all be done easily just by changing not this file, but a different uh, UUID object file. Uh, but anyway, so we create a unit, right? And we offset the unit. Basically, we spawn it uh, according to where the package position is. This function kind of figures out based on the package itself where it needs to spawn the thing, and then it spawns it using this command in that position with, of course, the color of the package color. Self.shape.color is the package color. Really, really cool stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a for loop. So we're going to go local i. Uh, no, not local if, local i. We're going to create a variable called local i, right? And that's going to... Actually, I might not even have to define it, but let's pretend I have to define... I'm not exactly sure. I haven't done Lua in so long. But anyway, so for i equals 1, uh, and we're going to go from i equals 1 to 2, and we're going to increment it by a value of 1, uh, do. And we don't have to put the 1 increment by default. This is just a Lua for loop. We could do this with a while loop as well. We could say, like, while i is less than 10. Um, for loops are a little bit faster in terms of execution time, because it's less lines of code. For example, if we do this with a while loop, we'd have to say, well, uh, you know, so we'd go local i, right? And we define i equals zero, so we give it a default definition. Let's just ignore ignore this nonsense for now, right? This for loop, let's just comment that out. And then we go, well, i, you know, is less than two, right? Do, and then we do this nonsense, and then we go i equals i plus one, and then we go uh, end, right? And so that's actually going to loop this back over and over again until i is equal to 2. So it starts at 0, goes through, adds 1, goes through, adds, it becomes 2, and so on and so forth. Uh, but you can see this is extra 
extra lines of code. So in the purposes of saving execution time, uh, as my girlfriend said, a for loop is actually faster. So for i, uh, comma 1, comma 10, or for i equals 1, comma 10, or no, not 10, 2, comma 1, right? So it'll increment by 1s. And now we don't need this nonsense, right? Because it'll automatically increment, and we just click do. So it should theoretically define some variable i, and then for i equals 1 to 2, incrementing by 1. So it's going to go i equals 1, then i equals 2, uh, do, and it's going to do this. So it should loop it twice, basically, is what we're going to do. And if we change this number to 3, it would loop it 3 times, 4 times, etc., etc. So let's save this, and let's reload the whole game. And this should theoretically, no matter what package we spawn, duplicate the creature coming out of it. All right, we're back in the world, empty test world. So again, shouldn't matter which package I spawn. And if I've done this right without an error, uh, this should spawn two. And it does. And now we have two. So it looped through that twice. We can kill you both. That's just that's just great. And of course, this is, this is kind of cool. It works for any package. So there we've got the farm bots, you know, two tote bots. Uh, it even works for stuff like cows. Like I said, all the packages, exact same. That's amazing. I love this is a one-shot gun too. Tape bots, same deal. Right? Oh, that was that was interesting. But of course, we can do this all day with any package. It's kind of amazing. So what I'm gonna do now is uh let's just take it to the extreme. So that that's obviously two. You can see they actually try and spawn inside each other's position because I didn't do any sort of offset. We could take that eye loop and add an offset. So let's actually let's try doing that. So if we go into the file here, uh, we've got for i equals 1 to 2. That's fantastic. That works. Let's do for i equals 1 to 5. Uh, comma 1, comma do. Uh, I don't know why this is on insert mode. Can I not? Is there a way for me to turn it off? Insert? I hate the delete nonsense. There we go. Thank God. I hate it when you type code. That was always one of my pet peeves. You know, there's some people who like it when you delete code. Like it auto delete. I don't know. The insert. But I hate it. Hate it. Shouldn't exist on a keyboard. It's terrible. Um, so here we go. i equals 1 to 5, comma 1, comma do. Um, so we're gonna basically increment by 5, sm.create unit, we're creating a unit in the world position plus spawn offset. Um, I don't know how much I, like, how much is a value of 1 even worth in this game? I honestly don't know, is it like blocks? It must be like blocks, right? So let's do plus spawn offset plus i times 10, right? So, so basically, we're gonna start, the first one's gonna be, oh, actually we can do this a little bit different, i minus 1 plus 10. Or I minus 1 times 10. So the first one's going to be I equals 0. Multiplied by 10 is 0. Uh, and the next one will be 2 minus 1 is 1 times 10. So it'll offset it by 10 units in whatever direction this is. Now, I know there's a huge modding community on Scrap Mechanic. I've actually had a few people already send me messages and be like, Hey, man, here's some libraries and resources and stuff like that. So I definitely have to look through all that. There's a lot of cool stuff. If you guys have ideas, of course, for things to mod, put them down in the comments down below. I'm not planning on making a lot of like crazy workshop mods or anything. I definitely am going to fix the invincibility mod a little bit, add more parts to it, because I find that just to be a very useful mod. Uh, for doing things with bots, but I, I'm not going to make too many serious workshop mods. I might do more modding videos like this where I just screwed around with different things. There's a lot of cool stuff to dive into, and even when I was diving into this stuff, I found like 20 other things I wanted to do. Like, you can play around with character animations and all sorts of like ridiculous things that I have no idea what they're going to do or if they're going to work or what's going to work, but I'm really excited at just the prospect of playing around with things in Scrap Mechanics. So, Anyway, this one's going to spawn 5, and they should be offset by, like, 10 units in some direction. Uh-oh. Uh... Okay. Alright, I think what the problem is, is actually, I had this math in this function. I have no idea, to be honest. I really need to pull up the console window. There is a way to enable, like, dev mode uh, in the game, which brings up a console window. But for some reason, it doesn't really print a whole lot of errors to it, so I gotta, I gotta deal some debug. Anyway, I think what I can do is I can take this local spawn offset, and I can put this inside my loop, and, you know, it's basically a vector, so I'm creating a vector here with plus i. I don't know if this, this might, this might not work, this might just explode, but I think the issue is this is a vector, and I can't just add a random variable to a vector, because then it just, it's not the same data type, right? Everything is all about data types, so I think by doing this, Local Z offset is an absolute value of the parameter of the item. So I think this is going to be valid. And then this is just adding that to the vector Z position, which then in turn gets put here. And this is going to be done in each incremented loop. Like, I don't know. Maybe that'll work. I don't even know, like, how much 1 is. If I is 1, I don't know how much that does. But anyway, let's uh, let's go back to Scrap Mechanic and try this out. So I don't know if this has worked. 
Oh yeah, there we go. The one wasn't enough. Um, so that was the issue. I was I was trying to basically send something with a fixed value on a vector. So we need to do like I times 10, but basically you can see they're all trying to offset like <laughs> right above each other instead of... Oh, this is amazing. Okay, hold on. Let's snipe. Oh god. Oh god. You guys are you're all ragged on. All right, hold on. Let's let's uh, fix that up real quick. Make let's make that bigger. All right. So in this function, we're gonna go uh, plus i. This is gonna be actually plus i minus one times ten. Let's go times twenty. I have a feeling this is like like units, which I'm not sure if that's blocks or close to blocks or how much one unit is. But let's do i minus one times twenty. Um, and let's see how big of a spawn offset that is. So this is actually in the z direction. Um, actually, hold on. Let's not be stupid here. Let's, this is Z offset. Let's do this in the X direction. So let's put this on I minus one times 20 minus Z offset. So it's going to offset it by X and then this, everything's in vectors, which is kind of cool. Um, but that's why it didn't work over here because spawn offset is a vector value. This is a vector value. This function is obviously asking for the unit ID, some vector, the rotation of it, and then the color, which kind of makes sense, because that could point you in the direction you want and what angle you want it to be at. But let's reload up Scrap Mechanic. Let's see if we can offset them by X. So they should all appear in like a line. All right, so here we go. We spawn one of these. We should have an X offset now, so... Oh, there we go. I was like, where did they all go? So there you go, five in a line. So that's the 20-block range. Let's just let's just kill all you. Uh, hit you with my, with my, thank you, my one-hit cows. But anyway, so here we go. So X is actually this direction. And you can see, look at that. And that's the 20 block X spacing per I. So we're actually offsetting them all, which is kind of interesting. Um, and then, of course, we can play around with that. We could change the spawn position. And, you know, it's like I said, it's a really cool function. I'm going to have to mess around with that a lot, especially because I believe the spud gun outputs a vector for the projectile. So there should be a way for me to adjust that to actually shoot a real cow and not just a skinned cow. But the final thing I want to do today is actually just play around and make this ridiculous. So there's 20. You spawn them in a line. But let's uh, let's see what happens if we jack this up to a really stupid number. So we're going to get rid of the offset because obviously, you know, that puts them way, way out there. And we're going to make it like, I don't know, like let's go with 50, 100. Let's see, let's see how ridiculous these get. All right, so let's just take this spawn offset. Uh, let's put it back outside. They're all going to spawn on top of each other and just push away. Don't really care about that. We'll put it back to being zero. Uh, and this is, of course, for I equals 1 to, to 5. Let's go 1 to 50. Let's just start with a nice conservative 1 to 50 incrementing by 1. So it's going to spawn 50 units all on top of each other. All right, so for this, we're going to start with the tote bots. The farm bots, we'll, we'll do that eventually, but they like to lag when they ragdoll. So I'm kind of worried it might just crash the game in one shot. So let's see what happens with tote bots. Oh, my God. Okay, well, that's, that's hold on. Let me go no aggro here. Uh, yeah, aggro off. Can we, thank you. Let's just... Yeah, we'll just, just, just shoot them with the invincible cows. Yeah, one, one hit. Oh my god, they're going everywhere. That's, is that actually 50? I can't even, I, I, I'm assuming it is. It would be, okay, actually, you know what? This is an easier way to do this. Perfect. All right, so 50 tote bots. Let's just get up on the lift here. We can get a better view of this. And now they shouldn't be aggroed. I'm curious, how big is this spread? Wait, what? What are you guys doing? Oh, okay, there. <laughs> what just happened? What? Is it because there's no aggro? They have nothing to target, so they all just stand there? Look at that. Look at that, they just... And then they all, they all club. That is a lot of bots. Okay, hold on. We can do, we can do some cool stuff, though. Check this out. So we can paint this one white. And we can paint this one white. Right? And then we can go, like... Yeah, and now it's just 100 on 100. Just, oh my god. <laughs> Let's go! I can't even tell what's that. Oh my goodness. Holy cow. That is a lot of sparklers, I tell ya. Oh my god. Are, are you guys even dying? Like, what's... That's so great. Oh, that's perfect. Now you don't even have to spawn 50 capsules. You just have a single capsule that spawns all the stuff for you. Are you... What are you... Jeez. Holy... I think white's gonna win. I feel like white's got the upper hand in this battle. It's really hard to tell. Like, random... Look, look at that guy way over there. I think, yeah, white won. White white for sure. They, they took that somehow. There's like one last clump of greens over there, but they're about to get killed by this clump of... There they go. That's amazing. All right. 
Of course, we can do other stuff. Uh, you know, we got we got Haybots, same deal. Uh, you know, you can do Haybots versus 50 Tape Bots, I guess. Let's, uh, you know, they're just normal. So let's go pop capsules. Uh, wait, are you guys not... What was I was about to say, you guys weren't aggroing on each other? Like, what the heck was... I, I can't even... I can't even... I think the tape bot's won. The one guy's dragging everybody else along. Oh, no, no, they, st they They actually can't get unstuck. The tote bots and the hay bots seem to unstuck themselves. There. Oh, we got another line coming. Hold on, I got a solution. I just put a, a farm bot in the way. There we go. Perfect. Get him. Get him, boys. Get him. Oh, my God. <laughs> This is awesome. It's just such a brawl. You have no idea. What it oh, no, you guys shot the oh there go the farm bots. Oh boy Um, Can't oh the game is crashing. Oh, it's crashing so hard. Hold on. We got to get rid of the we got to get rid of the farm bot Oh, no, I have no sound. Oh Boy guys guys stop 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 just just Okay, perfect. People are dying. People are... Oh my god! Oh no! Uh-oh. I think I... Oh, I think I crashed the game. Alright, well that world completely exploded, so I want to do one more thing. I want to do Local J as well. And I want to take this spawn offset and put it back inside. Right? Inside this loop. And what I want to do, because I think this will be cool, is do 4J. We're going to do a nested for loop. So 4J... Uh, equals 1, comma, 50, comma, 1, do. And actually, let's make these, like, ridiculous. We're not gonna spawn farm bots, because obviously, they are killers. Let's do 100 to 100. So, uh, that's like, what? 1,000, oh, 10,000 units? Perfect. Uh, and then we'll just do an end there. And our spawn offset is gonna be, um, I don't know, I and J. Um, and that'll be it. So we'll put down our, our capsule, and then everything will spawn out from the capsule, and 20 seem to be lots of spacing, so let's see what happens if we give them the spacing once. This will be 10,000 units inside two units. We're probably just gonna flat up crash the game, but this is gonna be kind of awesome if it works, so let's see what happens. Obviously, the stuff I'm doing right now is actually pretty basic. I am gonna get into more advanced things at some point, but I really was just curious to see what we could actually do with these spawn capsules. So, we're gonna start with the tote bot. Uh, I'm gonna turn aggro off so that they don't all try to attack me all at once, and maybe that'll work. So, Theoretically, if we shoot this, it should send a hundred that way and a hundred that way and every position in between, making a big square. Um, three, two, one. Oh no. Oh, is it gonna do it? Is it gonna... I don't know if it's gonna do... I might have... I might... I might have sent too many commands to the game. Well, it's 10,000 commands. Uh, <laughs> it might, it might be too many, it might just, oh, there they are! Oh my god! It's a, they went the wrong direction! Okay, I put it the wrong way! Oh my god, that is so many of them. Oh. Oh my, yes. Yes, Avengers Assemble, let's go. Oh my, that is too many animations. That is, that is so many, hi everybody. Hello. Today, we fight for freedom. I don't know. This is amazing. Oh, God. That's okay. Hold on. That's too many animations. Let's, uh, let's do something a little bit simpler here. Let's kill all those. That is insane. That's actually, they're like right next to each other too. I guess we can do like one times two offset. I times two, J times two or whatever. Make them a little more spaced out. But that is amazing. Can, are, we, are you gonna, you guys gonna disappear now? This is, oh my God. There's so many of them. Okay, perfect. Alright, let's use the smallest capsule. Which I feel like is the simplest. Let's go with the glow bugs. Let's see if we can make an army of glow bugs. You ready? Oh no. As soon as you shoot that cow, man, it just... Come on, glow bugs. Assemble! So basically... Oh yeah, perfect. Perfect. Yes. The glow bugs don't even fully render. That's so crazy. The bots fully render, but the glow bugs don't. 
Okay, you know what? I think we're gonna... Let's just reduce this by a little bit. Uh, maybe 10,000... You know, it doesn't even... Look at that. It doesn't even render them all. Like, can I... Hold on. They're not moving. Can I just... What if I run into the middle of it? It's just gonna render more, right? Oh, boy. This is a PowerPoint presentation if I've ever seen one. Look at them all lined up so neatly. There's still more. There's still more. As I keep going, there's still more. It's a hundred rows by a hundred rows of glow bugs. All awaiting orders. Ready to fight back against the cardboard oppressors. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. Alright, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna kill all these two. I'm gonna reduce it to just a little bit less. So we're gonna go in here. Uh, we'll keep the spawn offset times two instead. So we're gonna adjust this so they're a little bit more spaced out. And instead of for one to a hundred on each, let's go one to fifteen, right? That'll be one to fifteen, one to fifteen. That'll give us like what, a hundred, two hundred twenty-five per hit per spawn. That should be good enough. All right, so here we go. Fifteen by fifteen. This should be pretty clean. Oh no, I forgot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No aggro. No aggro. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Perfect. Okay. I think I think this is actually gonna be good. Fifteen by fifteen. Alright, they're always going to spawn, like, that direction, no matter which way, because I don't have the yaw changing the offset. of the It doesn't matter. It, it'll be fine. Alright, so that's 15 there. Uh, let's do this one, paint it white. Here we go. Oh, you guys are just, like, half in each other. Oh, no. Oh, no. I made a miscalculation. So this is, like, what, 400 bots? All fighting? <laughs> Jeez. Hey, this game becomes PowerPoint so fast. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no. You are not supposed to spawn this many bots all at once. Look at them go, though. What a battle. I need to get a better view of this. Look at... It's just crazy. The number of them that get flung out, too. I feel like what we could do, too, is we could actually mod it. Um, maybe there's a way to remove the animations in the graphics settings. I'm not sure. But you could remove all the animations through modding. There's literally an animations file. And we could just rip, like, all the animations out of that and have it not render any of the animation meshes. I don't know if that would actually speed it up or not. Um, it might... Or it might just not care because it's still trying to calculate the animations. We could also just, like, make the animations file blank. And that might, I don't know, might throw an error. It's really hard to say. Like I said, I'm just getting into scrap mechanic modding and trying to just play around with some things for fun. And really, for me, a lot of this is just trying to understand what's actually possible within the game code and what we actually have the ability to do. There's a lot of files, like I said, in a lot of different places. And there's a lot of really cool stuff that we can dive into. This is quite stupid, though. I'm definitely going to get working on the Invincible mod again. Like I said, I'm going to change that up, add more parts to it, and then make another battle arena because I got a lot of great ideas on the last video for a bot battle arena. This is uh, bot battles to the sort of extreme level. Um, but this is way too much. There's so many spawning all at once it's absolutely insane but yeah let me know what you guys think in the comments down below if you got other silly mod ideas you want to try and scram mechanic like i said i'm no expert i'm like literally just getting into this i have programmed before in the past i used to do some programming for part of my job um but you know i'm, I'm no expert in scram mechanic and i definitely haven't done lua in like forever so it's getting back into it, it's gonna be a lot of fun and i really like it i i really do miss programming it's the one thing when I switched to become a full-time YouTuber, I kind of stopped programming just in general. I spend a lot more time making videos and recording videos and that sort of thing. So I'm really excited to get back into the programming side of things. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you like this style of video, this sort of format, then of course, definitely let me know. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see y'all next time. White's won again. Like, quite literally, there's a little green, green group. But that's it. Look at that. That, that group over there. That's the Dominators.